Space, a boundless area around the Earth. Empty, unoccupied, void. Or is it? Since mankind's first space missions in 1957, the emptiness of space has gradually been filling up. In fact, nowadays there's a lot of mess in space. Spent rockets, defunct satellites, and numerous other pieces of space junk fly around and pose an extreme risk to working satellites and technology that's in orbit. There are estimated to be about 900,000 pieces of debris larger than a marble in orbit around the Earth, according to statistical models cited by the European Space Agency. 34,000 of them are larger than four inches. Christophe Bonnell from the European Space Agency is an expert in space pollution. All the satellites and space debris amount to a mass of around 7,500 tons. 7,500 tons is the same mass as the Eiffel Tower, so you have to imagine the Eiffel Tower shattered into tiny pieces above our heads in space. Since 1967, when the Outer Space Treaty was signed, most countries have agreed that space should be an area free of conflict and weapons. But on April 27, 2019, India's Prime Minister announced that his country had shot down one of its own satellites using a ballistic missile. was received with shock by space agencies around the world. Space scientist Rudiger Yen is a firm believer in the space treaty. My first reaction was I was outraged. How can you do this? Um, outer space in the Outer Space Treaty is for the common heritage of mankind. Um, we should make peaceful use of, of outer space. The test, known as Mission Shakti, established India as a global space power. Few countries possess this strategic capability that has been compared to shooting a moving bullet with another moving bullet. The use of weapons in space is a major concern. But scientists are extremely worried by the creation of debris. When a satellite explodes, hundreds of small pieces are flung through space faster than a bullet from a gun. But the Indians weren't the first to test this kind of missile. In 2007, China deliberately shot down an old weather satellite. The destruction was a great technical success because it requires hitting a target that's 40 centimeters by 40 centimeters, moving at 30,000 kilometers an hour. But unfortunately, it generated something like 4,000 large pieces of debris at a very high altitude, so they are around for a long time. They did it at 800 kilometer altitude, where the fragments, they are still in orbit after more than 10 years. India did it at um, 300 kilometer altitude, so there the fragments, they will not stay in orbit as long, but still um, they um, pollute um, the space around it. The Indian satellite was destroyed at a relatively low altitude of 180 miles, about 300 kilometers, well below the ISS and most satellites in orbit. But that doesn't mean that the space station is out of harm's way. The U.S. military tracks objects in space to predict the collision risk for the ISS and for satellites. Every day, they keep a close eye on 23,000 objects larger than four inches. And NASA believes a further 400 pieces of debris were created at the Indian missile test. 
When astronauts leave the space station, they take risks. Obviously, because they're no longer in their cocoon, protected by the walls and so on. So generally, they try to protect themselves behind a module or part of the space station, so they are not at as much risk. As a result of the Indian test, the risk of collision with the ISS increased by 44% over 10 days. But the risk dissipates over time as the debris is burned up when it enters the atmosphere. These debris, they go into eccentric orbits. That means the lowest point stays um, at 300 kilometers where the um, experiment was performed. But the upper center, the highest point, will go um, even beyond 2,000 kilometers sometimes. So they are in orbits which go up and come down all the time, go up and go down. And at 300 kilometers, there's still some atmosphere. So whenever they come down, they lose altitude. So the 2,000 gradually goes down to 1,800. They go through all the um, satellite altitudes, come down to 300. And once they are in a circular orbit, 300, 250, they gradually um, decay. They should have lifetimes, maybe of four weeks or um, a bit longer, but uh, not many, many years. Even impacts with tiny objects, such as bolts or paint flecks, created by collisions, can be catastrophic due to the speed at which everything moves in orbit, a minimum of five miles per second. The latest fragments add to the growing problem of space debris orbiting the Earth. Experts warn that unless the amount of junk is kept in check, collisions will become more frequent and could eventually trigger an apocalyptic cascade. Something along the lines of the one seen in the opening sequence of the film, Gravity. This kind of chain reaction between orbiting objects happens when one collision produces a cloud of debris and each of those fragments goes on to trigger further collisions. In real life, the cascade would occur over decades rather than immediately. But each additional uncharted fragment makes further collisions more likely. The Indian missile test may not have disastrous long-term effects, but most leading space scientists agree that creating any additional debris is problematic. We stipulated in one recommendation, you should not do voluntary breakups in space. But then I was reading the full text and says, which creates long-lived debris. So formally, they were not violating these IDC debris guidelines because they didn't create long-lived debris. But uh, in my point of view, it's against the spirit of uh, what we should do in space. We should keep space clean and um, sustainable. And that's not what they did.